Praise Master Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to discuss with us uh, uh, the New Testament position on discussing our generational background or what we call in the deliverance code family tree. What I mean is that for you, a Christian, to look back and say, uh, what kind of ancestors did I have? And uh, what kind of pool were they? I'm going to deal with matters in that direction. There, there are a lot of scriptures like that in the Old Testament, but when I teach, uh, I don't like to go to the Old Testament. But I like always to emphasize, even though I'm dealing with the New Testament in this matter, that the Lord Jesus Christ and Apostle Paul and the rest of them did not read the New Testament Bible. There was no New Testament Bible that they were preaching. So what they used was the Old Testament Bible. So anytime you hear the Bible say in the scriptures, or Jesus Christ say as it is written, he's actually talking about the New Testament. But then we are going to, uh, sorry, we're talking about the Old Testament. But now we're going to go to the New Testament. Just look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. And uh, that's uh, verse 3. Uh, Paul, Paul is speaking there. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that it lives in you. Now, I stopped at verse 5. Now, uh, two things we notice there, Paul wrote a letter to his protege, to his son in the Lord, and uh, he was trying to hand over to him. That was the last letter, uh, as long as uh, theological history is concerned, he wrote. And that was the last letter he wrote, and that was to Timothy. It was a handover letter. It was a letter, a very important letter. When a man makes his last speech when he's about to die, it's very, very important. And so it was handed over to Timothy. And now, talking about himself, Apostle Paul spoke about himself based on his background. He said, I, uh, God whom I serve, as my ancestors did, as my forefathers did, and now Paul was identifying himself with his background. He said, my ancestors served Jehovah. And uh, uh, he was holding to that as a ground, as a test, test, testament about his person, who Paul is. And uh, if you come to take it this way, how if Paul's father, or if he was an African like we have here, whose ancestor worshipped Amadioha, or as a worship Shango, or maybe your own part of the world that have a idolatrous background. I believe that Apostle Paul Stephen would have been, I thank God who saved me from worshiping the gods of my ancestors. In fact, he made such a comment when he was talking about the uh, the Dosnanaika, when he gave testimony. He said that the whole world testified how the church in Dosnanaika turned away from dead idols. I think that is First Thessalonians chapter 1. Uh, chapter 1. So, uh, from verse, uh, I will take from verse 8. The lost message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do, we do not need to say anything about it. Verse 9 now. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They, will t they tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So if Paul was from the Sinaica, you would have written that I, I, I turned away from idols. My background was an idolatrous background. So but in this place in 2 Timothy, Paul was writing and said that he himself had his father and his mothers, his ancestors, that they worshipped Jehovah. And that is to say to us that Apostle Paul believed that where a person is coming from matters. If you go further in that still second Timothy chapter one, it was chapter one. Now uh, 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 verse five. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Now he was talking to Timothy. He said, Timothy, I, I, your background, where you're coming from, 
You had a grandmother who was a woman of faith. You had a mother who was a woman of faith. And I conclude, because this is where you're coming from, you have faith dwelling inside of you. Now, that's what I'm trying to say to you, that looking back at your background and as to how things happen in your background is a very important issue. In fact, the same Apostle Paul, in talking about uh, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ, and himself and the uh, the uh, Jewish nation in uh, Romans chapter nine, and I will take that from uh, from verse three. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Verse 5. Theirs are also the patriarchs, and from them is stressed the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Now, if you look at this, he was talking about the Jewish nation, and he talked about this. He said they were his people. And uh, he talked about the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though he, he is God incarnate, he spoke about him and said, as to the human ancestry, that Jesus was a Jew. Now, what I'm going to say in this is that when somebody tell you, tells you that uh, you don't need to ask questions about your behind, ask questions about where you're coming from, the person and, uh, claiming that such, such assumption is built on New Testament, that once you get to the New Testament, you don't raise those issues. It's unfortunate, I have to say that, those, those people people are not speaking in line with what the Bible says about, about how we look at our generations. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking again in a Matthew, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 23, Matthew chapter 20, uh, 23 from verse 29. The Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, was speaking there. He said, he said, Watch are you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you build tombs for the prophets and they correct the grace of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead then and complete what your ancestors started. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Now the Lord Jesus Christ was talking to a, a, a particular people and he said that they were Jews and he said that they were children of those who keep prophets. In verse 35 he says, so upon you will come all the righteous blood that have been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murder between the temple and the altar. Truly I tell you, all this will come on this generation. So this is the Lord Jesus Christ talking about background, talking about people, that a particular set of people. He said that you, you have a background of those who keep prophets and the judgment for killing prophets is coming upon you. Now, if people of the Sunaga we quoted earlier, those people we are Gentiles. Now, let's take this in again this way. The, the gospel first came to the Jews. And that is why most of such emphasis dealt with the Jews. And I hope you agree with me that when Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that the things that we are reading, we are reading for our example, he was written to guide us as to prefer to deal with things. And now if you go, if we have to go to the Old Testament uh, uh, for a moment, you find that when they came to the promised land, the promised land was theirs. But the Lord just, uh, Almighty God told them to make sure that he put, they put out every adulterous altar and let no shrine remain upon their land. Because any altar on the land is a symbol of ownership on the land. So the background where you are coming from is very important. On one, one ground, first ground, is that it, it, it represents you, it's your spiritual representation. You must have a way to deal with your background. Where it is possible, you have to take a study and look at your background. There will be what we call here, deliverance question here, or family liberation question.
question here. You ask question where you're coming from. Because your background is your root. It will eventually have an effect on you. If as a believer, you have true foundation. I will not want, I don't want to go too far with this thing. But in that in that account of Second Timothy, Paul spoke about it, to Timothy in the very next verse from verse 6. He said, I laid hands on you. I brought you to the kingdom. And you receive spiritual gifts from me. So you are carrying spiritual gifts. Then your background, natural background, you have a lineage of people of faith. So Paul spoke about Timothy from two angles. He said, on one angle, your spiritual background. Your second angle, your natural background. In also Romans chapter 9, Paul spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ. He spoke about that from verse 4 to verse 6. He said, Jesus had a natural background. He had a heavenly background. And so when you are dealing with matters in your life, you remember to deal with matters in your life on these two fronts. One, on the natural background. One, on the spiritual background. Now, as long as you live on this earth, you still belong to this earth. There are things that connect to you. You still buy, you still sell, you still get involved in things. And if you look at Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, he said, If my people who are called by my name, we humble themselves and pray and uh, uh, repair for evil ways and talk for evil ways. I, 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 I think they said and, and seek my face and talk for evil, for evil ways. He said, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. And now, this we are people of God. They, we are God's people as we are today. But they were living in the land that was under a curse. So if you are living in a land under a curse, it will eventually affect your life. It doesn't affect your eternal destiny of going to heaven. But you need to know how to reclaim the land. Reclaim your family. You may not be able to go back to your father's house. But there are covenantal steps that can be taken so that you can reclaim your, your root. You can separate yourself from the background you came from that is not a right background. Now that's the point I'm trying to make you understand. There are things you need to do. Many of us pastors, I have seen pastors who are in America, in Europe and what is affecting their ministry is coming from far back deep in the jungle area of Africa because they have not learned to go back and deal with those things. Some people that, that are already in the city, their fathers got involved in slave trade. Some of them we are justifiably caused for doing some abomination and that cause went to all generations and now they are believers. There are two ways they can live their life as believers. They can live all their life struggling, fasting, praying every day, struggling one thing or the other. They may manage to escape, but anytime they go cold or their children go cold, those evil forces take hold of them. The second way they can deal with this matter is that they deal with it as, as, as an issue. They do what we call covenant breaking, generational cause breaking, land liberation, and these are the processes that can be taken to make sure that these matters are resolved. Now, I want to stop here because I just want to cast a light in this matter. But if you need more light in this matter, there are two of my books to carry. It. One of them, Challenges Associated to the Family Tree. The second one, Covenants, How They Affect People. These two books will give you more light as to how to deal with matters that have to do with your background, with your family tree, with some ancient covenants or some careless things. Even you yourself that would into and how to protect your generation. So of you hearing this now, it's almost too late to do anything about yourself. But you can do something very good, like the man Jonathan the of Saul did. When he discovered that his father was doing it badly, he secured a covenant for his generation. And that covenant was what preserved him. And we want to hear from you after listening to this teaching. My name is Emma Njengosu. I am the national president of Prayer Network for Universal Revival, the rector of the School for Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare. Uh, you can contact me by WhatsApp, plus 234 3-0-3-5-7-2-4-5-2-6 plus 2 3 4 eight, 0 3 5 7 2 4 5 2 6 I really love to hear from you. Remain under this anointing.